anybody that uh, watched our vlog for any length of time knows that uh, one of the things that we wound up having to do as uh, ranchers is uh, control predators. Uh, we wound up doing that several ways. We wound up hunting them uh, with guns and bows and everything else, and we you know, like using calls the traditional way. But uh, because we have so much property out here, I mean, take a look. I mean, lots of property out here. Okay, we wind up, uh, we also use snares. And, and on a lot of these vlogs, you'll see me wind up going, uh, wind up catching bobcats, coons, all kinds of stuff, uh, uh, coyotes uh, in snares. Uh, there's something that, uh, but and we run the snares every morning just to make sure that, uh, you know, what we got, we want to catch it and uh, dispatch it quickly. And here's something that I found. These are the two luckiest dogs in the world right here. I want you to see them. They are right there. Okay. And they are flat tuckered out. And the reason why I say they're the luckiest dogs in the world is because there is a snare right next to where they're laying down. I've got them tied up right now on the fence. Uh, they Thank goodness they had collars on them. Uh, these dogs, uh, I called the owner already. He's on his way. Uh, these dogs are wore out. These dogs came from eight miles away. Uh, the one thing that, uh, that I love dogs, I love dogs, but I hate dogs with deer. And the reason why is because the dogs will wind up killing the deer. The deer are extremely valuable and I love dogs, but a dog owner should love their dogs too. Love them enough to be able to uh, make sure and take care of them and keep them, uh, contained, know where they are at all times so they don't get in trouble. So anyway, these, this guy right now is on the way. We're going to, uh, I got to dig a hole underneath the fence, get him out on this side, uh, get them in some kennels, and then we're going to wait for the owner to show up. But these happen to be the luckiest dogs in the world right now. How about it, lucky dogs? Huh? Okay, we're good to go. See the wagon tail behind me there? We're good to go. We're going to drop them off with their daddy. I'm telling you, I'm some kind of ticked off right now, okay? I'm kicking myself and like going, what the heck should I have done? I took those dogs, uh, spent an hour and a half of my time this morning, uh, tying the dogs up, getting them uh, lined up with their owner. And then when I got with the owner, the owner wound up, uh, he told me, he says, uh, that's the fourth time they've gotten out. He didn't tell me thank you. I appreciate it, nothing. Uh, clearly when the dogs got over there to him, it looked like they had been abused. And it kind of ticks me off because I'm thinking, you know what? Those dogs were about this close to me shooting them for being on the place because dogs should be tied up. They are, are actually uh, fenced in. I mean, I love animals. Look at this. There's Tom right there. Hi, huh, Tom. Do I love animals? I love animals. But deer, deer do not, uh, deer and dogs don't get along. And I love deer too. So anyway, it ticks me off that, that I have a, a neighbor. He's eight miles away that doesn't even care about his dogs enough to let him get over here and not even say thank you. Would you be pissed off? I think those dogs deserve better. All righty. We got a cold front coming. The last time I was out here fishing with old Chuck, who's down here, the last time we had a terrible cold front blowing in and we still caught some fish. And the weather's been beautiful for the last three or four days and all week long. It's going to be like, man, I can't wait to go out fishing on the weekend. And all of a sudden, we got a cold front coming. So, uh, actually, the second cast, I got one of these guys that bit me. And I, I'm going to try to see if we can fill the bucket up today before the cold front hits. So, anyway, we're going to piddle around and have some fun. Oh, you throwing a crankbait. This is the biggest bass I've caught so far. I've been throwing a rattle trap and... Uh, my dad's been focusing more on uh, crappie, but he's been catching all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this guy back in. I want to show you this. I got a little mixed bag going here. Got some crappie, bass. I may need a bigger bucket here in a minute. Got me a, a channel catfish. Hold on, look at that. Not bad right there. There, there he is. Like I said, oh, you little booger. Saw myself. Okay. Wait a minute. I caught a sucker. Alright. So the cold front hit. And the fishing's warmed up. The cool thing about this, come with me. I'm gonna show you. We got somebody clean the fish. <laughs> Look at this. Look at these doggone fish. 
He's big. What are you doing over there? I mean, look. Anyway, we got the fish. What we got over here? Oh, you, know, you got there. something in the mouth? You know, crawfish. Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. Got a crawfish down in that fish's mouth. Nice. Right. So, you so, let me see. Out. Look at that. Mmm, mud bug. I okay. Just, I was just talking to the people that make those lures for me. How you I doing? Just all right, all right. Out. Good to see you again. Yeah, I right. see you. You showed it. up just in time. Well, I'm coming. Let <laughs> me get the crawfish out of there without killing it. Damn. All right, so so uh, so we wound up coming to supper, and uh, I go to the bathroom, come out here, and look who's here. Huh? Ah, number oh. one outdoor TV host in the country. That's right, I sure Bam. am. <laughs> So here's the deal. Let me let me help Keith out. It. So this this is a good dude. He's a Texas guy. Even though Tiger lost today and Beto sucks, my man right here will shoot something with a pellet gun. What do you think? And Bam. I'll do that. Boom. Give anyway. me some love. Give me some pig man love right here. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you too. All right. How do you think? I mean, it's small world, huh? Yep. I'm uh, sitting about. 20 yards away from a feeder that we've got lots and lots of hogs sign around here. Reconic's been taking lots of pictures of hogs. And uh, meanwhile, Maddie, she's down hunting for turkey. She's uh, down another piece of, on another piece of the property here hunting for turkey. So uh, I'm shooting actually a double barreled air gun. And this is the uh, Seneca double shot. And it's a 50 caliber. And as you can see, I've got it loaded up with uh, two arrows. So. Hopefully I can use both of them, but we got to start out with one. So anyway, we're going to get this thing shut down and get real quiet and hope a pig comes in. All right, I wound up. I just shot a, a pig and... There's the arrow. And I got blood right here. Woo! Look at this. Look at that blood right there. Right there. Blood right here. Oh man, all kinds of blood. Good, great. There it is right here. Right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here, I'm gonna pull it out here in the out here in the sun. Okay, look at that. That right there's old muddy nasty pig right there. And I'm gonna show you something. This is what I shot it with right here. It looks kind of unusual. It is. It's a 50 caliber double barrel double shot gun. And uh called the Seneca double shot but I've got it topped off with a thermal most of the time hogs come in at night this one came in <laughs> in the daytime and now it's dead anyway uh, we're down here in South Texas yesterday was raining like crazy and uh, we got Tyler with pyramid air coming in and uh, we're hoping hoping that he can get a hog or turkey All right, so uh, this afternoon we had a pretty good sit. We were, I'll uh, just uh, show you what's going on here. You know it's the end of the night when I'm taking my belt off. You know my good old bungee strap, gonna have to go use it on a reconics here in a minute. <laughs> we're multitaskers, very frugal people. That's all I have to say. The accent is so <laughs> on point. It is unfreaking real. <laughs> this is Tyler, by the way. We haven't introduced y'all to him yet. Hey, He's how's it going? Like the leading man at Pyramid Air, he knows everything. He's our go-to guy whenever we have questions about any of the guns and the tanks and everything that goes with it. So if you need anything air gun related, hit us up, Pyramid Air. We spell it funny. P Y R A M Y D. Just in case you were wondering. They're from Ohio. Yeah, we're not really from around here. At least you didn't catch that by the accent. Yeah, they're from Ohio, so anyway, they spell pyramid different. But anyway, we got to take care of these pigs, and all is good. And, and what do you think about Maddie's belt? 
I think that's pretty cool. She is really high maintenance. So this morning we wound up wrapping up doing interviews and stuff and then the ranch foreman comes to see us. Riding his pony. There he is. Say hi, Aaron. Hello, how are y'all? Okay, so who you got there? This is my good horse, Sister. Your good horse's sister? No, this is my good horse. Her name is Sister. Oh, I thought your good horse no. or your sister. No, this is my good horse. Her name is Sister. This is, okay. This is my dependable one. Okay, good. The young one. Alrighty, I got a cantaloupe. It's ripe. I love cantaloupe, but uh, when there's two ripe to eat, I got something to do with them. Let me show you. Okay, if you're not watching the high road on our YouTube channel, you're missing out because we got some pretty cool stuff. Okay, this is a DP12 shotgun. It's a dual pump. 12 gauge double barrel shotgun check that out and no I've got a special camera so I'm not pointing it at the camera but check this out right here it's got chokes on it and uh, I've got it typed off with a little sight mark uh, red dot sight uh, it'll hold 16 rounds and so it's the absolute ultimate in a personal defense uh, firearm for your home and so I'm going to show you what I do with the cantaloupe I don't like them now when they're too ripe What do you think of that? That right there is pretty awesome. Again, this is the DP-12 made by Stanley Manufacturing. We're uh, we're doing all kinds of cool videos on our YouTube channel. And so, as watching this vlog, you're seeing some behind the scenes stuff. Anyway, I'm getting ready. So this afternoon, we're fixing to do a uh, elongated version of this and then go on a hog hunt with it. And I'm gonna show you how the personal defense firearm works real good on a feral hog. So if you want to see that video where we use this DP-12 on a feral hog, make sure and check out our YouTube channel because we've got all kinds of cool stuff with all kinds of cool guns.